Clark. Yeah. Ruby Noah. Clark, so thank you very much for taking our interview. Yeah, about that. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Could you tell actually tell us more about like your story, like how you come to Chongqing? Sure. Yeah, and how long you been here? Sure. I came to Chongqing in 2011. Um, I visited Chongqing in 2010, but I moved here in 2011. And at that time, I was considering a business model or a, a plan to open a school with a Chinese business partner. And we attempted to do that for about two years. And in the process, we learned a lot from our mistakes and we decided to close our business and try other things. So I taught English. Um, for a while and then afterwards I uh, decided to save my money and over uh, doing some consulting abroad over the course of four years I was able to save enough investment to start my own company here in Chongqing and I've been doing consulting company since 2016. Six, oh, yeah, so and, before that and, you are like actually teaching, and then before teaching you are doing some startup. Thing yeah, we we tried to start up a okay. a school okay. actually here in Chongqing, and it failed. Okay. And then yeah, I decided to uh, go on my own, teach English for a while, and then do some consulting abroad. So outside of China, I did an online. I did some consulting work for about four years, and. In 2016, I had enough capital to start my own business here in Chongqing. So, actually, um, I don't know whether you have noticed that I think like in Chongqing, there are like a, a considerable number of expats actually yes. start here as uh, start here as teachers, right. know, like because there's great need for right. education for that. Exactly. And except for that, and um, among them, actually many of them have their own idea, you know, like to do some business of their own in sure. Chongqing. Yeah? That's right. Uh, do you like? Do you think it's an easy thing, or some recommendations, suggestions? Sure. I actually think going to any country and starting your own business as a foreigner, as an expat in any country, is significantly much more work than you originally expect it to be. It's uh, very challenging at times. Not only do you have to deal with the new language, uh, differences in culture, the culture also affects the way people do business. Yeah. So about like these people like in Chongqing, like expats, uh, they, they want to start their own business like that. Right. So I think you have met a couple of them, right? Like maybe some, many of them already. Yes. What kind of business actually they are trying to do and they, uh, do they usually get succeed? Um, like I said, I've, I've been here for two years doing this business and so far I've come across people who are doing trade business. Some people actually starting tech startups. Um, I know of one company that's helping people with processing their VAT tax return in Europe. And then there's also some people working in travel or third sector kind of work, uh, something in be social enterprise, something in between, um, something charitable and something for profit. Um, it's still early, too early to say uh, how successful they can be. Um, I have seen a lot of failure though. I've seen at least uh, five different businesses that were started by foreigners uh, turn out uh, to be failures. Okay, yeah. but um, are they actually the experts like they are active here, right? Like, to, uh, like the number of them, they want to do their own, are they big? Um, yeah, there are a lot of people who are interested and they're still learning about the market. Okay but um, they haven't exactly started yet. Okay. I, I know a few that are um, just recently registered, they just recently applied for their business license, um, but they still haven't 
uh, opened up their business. Okay, this yeah. is uh, generally speaking, it's like in Chongqing, like these people actually are uh, at starting age, right? Right. Yeah, think about doing that. Sure. And maybe not start yet or start already at this early right. age. But do you think Chongqing, I mean, like this uh, market, okay, is like uh, suitable? You think like it's optimistic? About yeah, I think that, that since Chongqing is a municipality, um, special municipality under the direct supervision of Beijing, it helps a lot. Um, and in recent years, the policies have become more transparent. Mm -hmm. I still think, I, I think that there still needs to be a lot of progress. There's mm -hmm. still a way to go mm -hmm. in order to encourage um, more investment, especially with mm -hmm. small business, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I see. But compare with other places in China, let's see, inland, right? Inland. Mm -hmm. Do you think Chongqing have some advantages for these startups? Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Many, many advantages. Um, I think because it's on the One Belt, One Road mm -hmm. route, there's um, confluence of the Yangtze River yeah. along with the train route to Europe. Yes. So yeah. it's a logistics hub. So um, companies that are, or projects that are offering solutions to um, logistics companies to streamline their services or to help them with their problems, um, they can find a market here. Yes. Right. Could you tell us more about this community? Yeah, so in 2018, in August, we kicked off Startup Grind. Uh, as the chapter director, I was able to, uh, given the opportunity to um, put together a team of people, volunteers. We are in, uh, we've been in Chongqing now for eight months, um, working on different uh, events. Mm -hmm. Our the thing that draws us together is our value of wanting to help each other and help others. Um, we also have two other values that we center around. Besides helping others, we give first, don't take, and make friends. So um, when we first started in Chongqing, we didn't know if there would be a lot of people that wanted to have this kind of activity of inviting uh, guest speakers, um, keynote speakers, and other knowledge leaders to share from their experiences yeah. and also to build a community that helps others. Um, but actually, it started to take off very quickly and build a lot of interest. And I think one reason why is because we have a strong community already in Chengdu, Beijing, Shenzhen, and Shanghai. These cities all already have chapters. We're in 25 cities all over China and we have 20 eight chapters, including uh, three university chapters as well. For her website. Yeah. Startup in Chongqing is like eight months, right? So far, yeah, about eight, eight, eight months. months, yes. I know like regular lectures are held there, right? right? And who are these guest speakers? Well, our first speaker was Dr. Gao Yu from Panda Auto, Panda uh -huh. Yongchu. Yeah. And um, our second speaker is from Jubajie, one of the vice presidents of Jubajie. And we also had um, Ja, excuse me, sorry, that was uh, our third speaker. Um, ja and Joseph from Nanlu Ti were our second speakers, second and third speakers, they came together. Um, our format is fireside chat, mm -hmm. so we, we have this kind of conversation, an interview, mm -hmm. sitting together on a sofa or comfortable chairs. Yeah. We ask some questions about the challenges that they faced, um, the opportunities that they were able to uh, take advantage of and how they brought their product or their service to the market. And um, then the, the crowd can ask their own questions as well after the interview. Yeah. Usually who are the audience? The audience are startup stakeholders. Um, we, we want to build a healthier ecosystem here in Chongqing for startups to survive and thrive. And for that to happen, we need to involve all the stakeholders and let them know all the information that's available to them. Um, we're talking about startup, uh, startup founders themselves, their co-founders, some of their investors, 
venture capitalists, mm -hmm. uh, CTOs, um, and other people that are working for startups as well. Co-workspace managers, like the one that we're in right now here is MK Space. Yeah. Um, it's and this at this place, right? Yes. And she's also, the, the owner of this is also a partner of, uh, of Startup Grind. Yes, yeah. they participate on a regular basis with Startup Grind. And, um, we're a non-profit, um, social enterprise kind of organization. So uh, we, we don't even make a profit. Startup Grind doesn't make a profit, but we try to break even. And in order to do that, we need sponsors like MK Space and other partners to help her space for free. Like yeah. That, yeah, but I think it's, right. it's quite nice. And this place is also, I think, offered for some time, like for the startup to work. Right, right. Place, right. These places are co working spaces, and their customers are the same as ours. They're uh, startup people, people I that see. We, we actually call our people fellow grinders mm -hmm. because we're all grinding hard on our own businesses um, trying to get our product or service polished well for the market okay. and trying to find the market fit and some of us have already succeeded in that um, in getting to a, a place where we can scale our product scale our service to a greater market Okay. Yeah, they are doing good. Yeah, um, doing yeah, there are a few that I can name. Mm -hmm. um, there's one called Vat Tax. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're a European startup. Okay. Um, we also have Akadu. They are a, a translation service mm -hmm. online. Um, they do live events. Mm -hmm. um, there's also um, a few startups like, um, I, I don't remember the name of it exactly in Chinese, but they are doing some things like um, AI for uh, car navigation, okay. so autonomous vehicles. And there are also, um, there's also a startup that is doing creative things with spicy food from Chongqing. So they're they're exporting uh, new sauces from all over uh, from all over China that they manufacture here based on Chinese ingredients, but done in a new way and then market it to foreign foreign markets in so the U.S. and other countries. These are examples in Chongqing. Right? Yeah. Okay, that's also quite optimistic. Who are these owners usually? They are like just totally fully uh, uh, doing startups, or they are also working in some other places and part time. Um, most of them choose to do, when, once they start full on with their project, they choose to do it completely. Full time. Full time, full yeah. Time. Um, they save up their money first or they find, if they're bootstrapping, right, they save up their money, but if they need investment, they find that first before they get fully registered or it, while they're in the registration process. I see. And then they... They will just shift from shift. their current... Yeah, shift from their job. So.